Enter ye in at the strait gate, for wide is the gate, and broad is the way, that leads to destruction, and many there be which go in thereat. Because strait is the gate, and narrow is the way, which leads unto life, and few there be that find it. When it comes to the important things, like our eternal life, our salvation, we would be well advised to follow the directions given to us. If we follow directions and go the narrow way Jesus spoke of, we'll be on the way to life, life both now and forever. So, what are the directions? What are we told to do? Paul answers in one verse. In the times of this ignorance God winked at, but now commands all men everywhere to repent. If we follow instructions and come to God in repentance, then we'll enter his mercy and grace, as promised. He that covers his sins shall not prosper, but whoso confesses and forsakes them shall have mercy. Let the wicked forsake his way, and the unrighteous man his thoughts, and let him return unto the Lord, and he will have mercy upon him. We'll receive mercy, we'll have remission of sins that are past, we'll be purged of our old sins. Our past sins will be blotted out, and will be redeemed by his blood from the death penalty we had earned for those past sins. Repent, therefore, and be converted, that your sins may be blotted out, so that times of refreshing may come from the presence of the Lord. That's right. Our sins were not blotted out, past, present, and future, the moment Jesus died on the cross. Our sins remain, neither forgiven, nor blotted out, nor paid for, unless we come to repentance. We enter the presence of the Lord when we receive the gift of the Holy Spirit, which God gives to them that obey Him and repent. And we are His witnesses of these things, and so is also the Holy Ghost, whom God hath given to them that obey Him. Then Peter said unto them, Repent, and be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. That is how we enter justification. Much more than being now justified by his blood, we shall be saved from wrath through him. Through him works only as long as we abide in Jesus and, in repentance, follow the Holy Spirit. As long as we abide in him and follow the Holy Spirit, we remain in justification, not under condemnation. There is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. As long as we abide in Jesus, and in repentance follow the Holy Spirit, Jesus leads us out of slavery to sin. Outside of repentance, he cannot work with us. As many as I love, I rebuke and chasten. Be zealous, therefore, and repent. This is the narrow way that leads to life. An ongoing relationship with him yields the peaceable fruit of righteousness unto them which are exercised thereby. That is how we are sanctified made ready to receive the gift of eternal life as the Father's sons and daughters. Creation is not finished. It is still in process through Jesus. He is the potter. We are the clay. He cannot work with us if we are not in repentance. As long as we abide in Jesus and in repentance follow the Holy Spirit, He continues, present tense, to cover any new sins with His blood. But if we walk in the light as He is in the light, we have fellowship one with another, and the blood of Jesus Christ, his Son, cleanses us from all sin. As long as we abide in Jesus, and in repentance follow the Holy Spirit, Jesus, as our living High Priest, will faithfully redeem us by his own blood, the sacrifice he made available on the cross, who gave himself for us, that he might redeem us from all iniquity, and purify unto himself a peculiar people, zealous of good works. As long as we abide in Jesus, and in repentance follow the Holy Spirit, we have the hope of salvation, the promised gift of eternal life, to be received at Jesus' revelation, his return. But let us, who are of the day, be sober, putting on the breastplate of faith and love, and for an helmet the hope of salvation. For God hath not appointed us to wrath, but to obtain salvation by our Lord Jesus Christ. And this is the promise that he has promised us, even eternal life. Wherefore, gird up the loins of your mind, be sober, and hope to the end for the grace that is to be wrought unto you at the revelation of Jesus Christ. But, if we no longer abide in him, and return to a life of unrepentance and willful sin, then there is no blood, no sacrifice, to cover our new sins. 
For if we sin willfully, after that we have received the knowledge of the truth, there remains no more sacrifice for sins, but a certain fearful looking for of judgment and fiery indignation which shall devour the adversaries. In that case we return to condemnation. We are no longer in his goodness or grace, and will be cut off, will forfeit that hope of salvation. If a man abide not in me, he is cast forth as a branch, and is withered, and men gather them, and cast them into the fire, and they are burned. For if God spared not the natural branches, take heed lest he also spare not thee. Behold, therefore, the goodness and severity of God. On them which fell, severity, but toward thee, goodness, if thou continue in his goodness, otherwise thou also shalt be cut off. The Apostle Paul understood that even after preaching to others, he could possibly return to a life of sin, and therefore be rejected, a castaway. But I keep under my body, and bring it into subjection, lest that by any means one have preached to others, I myself should be a castaway. That's why we have so many warnings to give diligence to make our calling and election sure, to continue in its goodness, and not to fall away. Outside of repentance, we are outside His promised mercy and have no redemption. We will perish, paying our own death penalty. That's why Jesus warned, Except ye repent, you shall all likewise perish. Peter makes it clear, Come to repentance, or else perish. The Lord is not slack concerning His promise, as some men count slackness, but is long-suffering to usward, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. Judgment is on the house of God, the church, right now. For the time is come that judgment must begin at the house of God. And if it first begin at us, what shall be the end of them that obey not the gospel of God? Let us therefore fear, lest a promise being left us of entering into his rest, any of you should seem to come short of it. So you may be wondering, how does faith fit in? How does faith tie into justification? We come to justification and saving grace through faith not just because we have faith. For by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God. If we have faith, trust that God exists and rewards, then we might decide to come to God on His terms, in repentance, confessing and forsaking sin. Without faith, however, we would not see the choice, and therefore could never decide to come to Him. But without faith, it is impossible to please Him, for he that comes to God must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Even with faith, many choose to remain in their old lives, preferring the approval and the attractions of the world instead. That's dead faith. It is the decision to obey and come to God on his terms that pleases him, and for which we enter his promised mercy, and for which we have our past sins blotted out and for which we receive the gift of the Holy Spirit, and enter a relationship with Jesus. That is how we enter justification. Faith is necessary, but it is not enough. We must obey and come to God, otherwise our faith is dead. True believers, like Abraham, are those who act on their faith and obey God. Abraham's works was his obedience to God. He obeyed and left for the Promised Land, and later offered Isaac. The Apostle James cited Abraham's example, writing, But wilt thou know, O vain man, that faith without works is dead? Was not Abraham our father justified by works when he had offered Isaac his son upon the altar? Seest thou how faith wrought with his works, and by works was faith made perfect? And the scripture was fulfilled which says, Abraham believed God, and it was imputed unto him for righteousness, and he was called the friend of God. Ye see then how that by works a man is justified, and not by faith only. So we see that true believing goes beyond faith only. Note how Peter describes non-believers, not as faithless, but as disobedient. Unto you, therefore, which believe he is precious, but unto them which be disobedient, the stone which the builders disallowed, the same is made the head of the corner. So now, when we read believe in John 3.16, we see that more is required than faith only. For God so loved the world, that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Today, Jesus is the author of eternal salvation unto all them that obey him. 
Like Abraham, we today are called to journey, to leave behind the ways of this world and to take the narrow way that leads to life, eternal life in the promised land, the kingdom of God.